Hey everybody, welcome to the downtown studio. It's John Ramdean alongside Robin Black, UFC 205, going down this Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. Robin, you're looking sharp. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the open workouts, Conor McGregor, Eddie Alvarez, Yuan Jacek, and Kovalkiewicz. We saw them in action, and man, oh man, when you look at the way that Conor McGregor moves, and the, his, you, and you, you've talked about it, explained everything to us about space manipulation, but when you see him working and just how everything is so reactionary and, and just how committed he is to things and his mobility, it's something to, to marvel at. It really is. And, uh, you know, people get tangled up in the weeds in anything, in fighting as much or more than anything else. Sitting there, we're looking at these weird little complicated details. Of course, those matter too. But once everybody is looking at that, sometimes people go back to 30,000 feet and you look at the big picture. There's a modern philosophy that sort of revolves around one idea, and that is, what is the one thing such that by doing it, it renders all other things easier or unnecessary. So let that brew a little bit. And if you're looking at fighting that way, and what is the one thing such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? Don't let him touch you. Well, you can touch him. Dominic Cruz developed that one thing many, many years ago. Stephen Thompson will look to take the welterweight title with that one thing. And Conor McGregor understood you guys are all playing a game that I have just rendered irrelevant if you can't touch me. And that is what the modern guys are doing. And it's going to be, a, whether he wins or loses, whether uh, Stephen Thompson wins or loses, there's already a sea change in gyms where they need to understand this or all other fighters will start but, losing. Uh, isn't there certain realities involved? For example, you and I, I can't move as quickly as you can, so you can cover distance very, very quickly. So when you look at professional athletes, they're not, they're not created equally. There's certain genetic advantages, mm -hmm. there's certain, certain training advantages, skill advantages, so all those things have to come into play. So if you're the team of Eddie Alvarez, you're trying to figure that out. You're trying to solve the riddle of how can we get to this guy mm -hmm. without him able to respond, without him able to counter. Well, if people have made this a thing, and in uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov's uh, world, he has made the opposite of thing. What is the one thing such by doing that, that uh, Khabib can uh, make everything else unnecessary or easier, and that is he can close the distance and get you. That one thing, your ability to not get uh, somebody to have a hand on you, or your ability to force your hand on somebody else, that is the big picture. That is the macro fight that is happening in every fight right now. It's the one thing that everybody is understanding in the game of fighting, and it's what is at play. Yes, of course, we wanna watch how the head moves and where the hand mm -hmm. goes, and all of these, uh, how weight is distributed, when to wrestle and when to strike. All of this is still something we wanna watch, we're excited by it and the coaches need to do it and the fighters need to do it. But you need to understand when you're watching it, the one thing is whether or not I can touch you and you yeah. cannot touch me. And people become expert at that one thing and it makes everything else unnecessary or easier. We were having this conversation about uh, what do we get when we watch the open workouts. You and I were in Ottawa to see Stephen Thompson and Rory McDonald, and you just got the sense, just like we're talking about Conor McGregor, we got that same sense from Stephen Thompson, just his, his mobility and his movement, and you felt that it would be a factor. We were talking about uh, Kovalkiewicz and what, what she has improved on or what she's needed to improve on uh, to be able to take the title away from Yin Jacek. Right after we finish here at this desk, we will walk over to the cage and I'm going to tape my keys to victory yeah. for Kovalkiewicz, for Yin Jacek, for Woodley, and for Wonder Boy. And uh, when I was building those, right away, Shaughnessy and I went and looked and said, Kovalkiewicz, it's, it's a real tough fight. Yeah. We're going to fight Yuan and Yin Jacek. Uh, Kovalkiewicz needs to slip inside to the left hand. You got to do something because if you just eat her right hand, you're dead. You just keep eating her right hand, keep eating her right hand. If you move away, she chases you mm -hmm. with it. If you move towards her to grab her, she's very difficult and she makes you pay. We need to invite it, slip off the line and counter. It's a very simple meat and potatoes uh, tool that she has to have. When we, when Shaughnessy was looking at tape, you couldn't find her doing it at all in any of her fights, well at all. But you look at the open workouts and all of a sudden they're working on that. And uh, when you think about uh, all the incredible title fights that are going on, it's going to be a four-hour pay-per-view just to get a little bit of insight uh, from the open workouts. When you, when you think about who looked the best, 
from everything that you've seen in the past and going into this fight in New York City, who looked the smoothest? Sometimes you watch just a really old television show and it's cool, it's an old television show. Then you watch some cool thing on YouTube, some something on your phone and it's just newer. And McGregor's newer. I, I love Eddie Alvarez, he is truly one of my favorite fighters. Uh, parts of me will be cheering for him during parts and if he has great moments, I'll be so thrilled for him. But he does feel like an older prototype. He really does, and they all do. Uh, and Rafael Dos Anjos looked that way against Tony, and, and we'll find out if Woodley will look that way. But fighting has changed. You have to change with it. You have to change the way you watch it. We have to change the way we analyze it. And those coaches got to change the way they teach it, because if they don't, the whole game's going to pass a lot of these if, guys if, by. If Conor McGregor gets into a situation where he's playing the game that we've seen him play many, many times, and then Eddie Alvarez starts playing his game and starts capitalizing, does Conor McGregor change the strategy or is he fully committed to what's in his head in the game he needs to play? He, he is definitely a free thinker and he's an open field player and he can adapt for sure. Uh, the same philosophy works for Eddie as well. Eddie goes back, what is the one thing such that by doing it, it renders everything else easier or unnecessary? Close the distance, get a hold of this guy and put him on his back. That's his one thing. There are two one things are in conflict. And yes, we're gonna see cool punches and cool kicks, but it is the dynamic of those two one things that we should be watching for. Yes, it's considered to be one of the biggest cards in in recent memory, but I think all eyes will be on that main event between Conor McGregor and Eddie Alvarez for the UFC Lightweight Championship.